welcome back to another video. Today is a very exciting day. It's the 1st of September and on the 30th of September we have the very exciting birthday party for Minerva.com. They're turning 25 and it's my first time making a cocktail dress so I'm quite excited about that. Today we're gonna be working from Gertie's Ultimate Dress Book. My first time working from this book, I'm really excited. My idea was to make the um, fringed cocktail dress, this one right here, but I don't really know if I want the pencil skirt. Ideally I would want like a full circle skirt, but I don't know if I have enough fabric to do that because I didn't check how wide my fabric was when I bought it. So I bought three meters of that. However, because I've never made this before or anything from this book before, I'm not sure about my sizing and all of that. I need to copy down the patterns in the size that I think I need. Then I'm going to be making a mock-up today. You know what? I think I'm going to mock up the bodice and this pencil skirt because I really want to try a pencil skirt and Gertie looks so good in all of her pencil skirts and I think that um, she's changing my mind on pencil skirts. I've never been a pencil skirt person, but I really want to give them a go. So I might just do a full mock-up for this um, because obviously an A-line skirt or a, you know, three-quarter circle skirt, whatever, it's not going to be, I'm not going to have any fit issues with that. So should be fine. I don't need this to be ready until the 30th of, of September, but I'm going on holiday and also I have a lot of other things that I need to be doing or that I need to have done by that time that I go on holiday and this is one of them. So let's crack on. Okay, so first things first, I looked up the sizing chart and all of that, took some measurements and i was unsure because i felt like i was probably in between sizes so i went with a size 10 for the bodice and the skirt but as it turns out i'm actually a size 8 for the bodices on gertie's book and a size 10 for the skirts so um i've actually made a few things from this book now and tried different sizing and that's kind of the issue that i had with the fit but you know i made it work and um you know spoiler alert uh so yeah you have these pattern sheets um and everything in the back of the book it tells you exactly where to find everything so it's actually very easy to work with so once i had cut all of those out i went ahead and picked out some fabric from my stash i chose this um this is an old bed sheet that was in my grandmother's house and i've used it quite a bit for other things so i had to really puzzle out how to get enough fabric out of this especially because some of it has um holes that have been darned and like yeah it was quite a hard um puzzle but i figured it out i had exactly enough to make this dress and um i cut out the cotton first this is for the lining because I figured that it would be easier to make the lining first get all my fit issues out of the way and then make my outer dress you know the fashion fabric which I'm using a wool for um, just because I thought that it would um, be so much easier to work with the cotton for the fitting and also it was so hot at the time when I made this that getting like trying to fit raw wool over my body like on my skin just seemed like a nightmare so i'm definitely happy that i went this route because so much easier to unpick stitches so much easier to just like um yeah to fit so um this was definitely a good idea on my part and as this was my first time making this pattern i transferred my markings really neatly and i numbered every single pattern piece or like wrote what it was so that I would know what to do and in this instance I was actually um, marking and pinning at the same time just as I went to make it easier for me. This is a pretty basic um, kind of corsety top where you have a center panel for the like a center front 
which is cut on the fold. Then you have uh, the kind of princess seams, which is what I'm pinning right now. And that is for your like side front. Then you have a side back and a side and a center back. And so yeah, it's a pretty basic um, corset top structure or like design. Uh, and it comes together really quickly. You just pin everything. I just find, yeah, I'll just pin everything together, stitch those straight seams, um, and you have a top pretty much or a bodice. Then I also went ahead and marked my um, pencil skirt. And uh, it has a couple of darts at the top uh, and also has like a slit. And um, yeah, so pin my darts. I like to do all of the darts and get them out of the way. Uh, so I just pinned those and stitched them and um, then I could actually go and work on the fit for the bodice. Before I tried it on, I pressed all my seams because, you know, I'm I'm pretty adamant that pressing your seams is very important. And I also clipped those curves, which in hindsight I could have waited to do that later, but um, yeah, it's always easier when you're looking back, I guess. I also pressed my darts on the skirt. Um, I like to tie off the ends and leave you know, cut off the excess, leaving like about an inch or like a couple of centimeters. Then I pressed those really nicely. And I also went ahead and stitched the side seams for the skirt. Okay, so I just did a little fit of the bodice. I didn't try on, like, I kind of put on the skirt over top, you know, what I'm wearing. And it looks fine. Uh, but the bodice seemed big in this area even with my t-shirt on so i went ahead and put it on you know my skin and uh, i pinned the back together at the seam allowance and it definitely was too big um at the sides so i marked how much i need to remove which is not you know not too much it's this bit at this side well maybe it is quite a bit um then over here but as we go kind of down towards the waist it fits okay so i also noticed that the bodice seems quite long for the size of my torso so like for my proportions way too long that's where my waist my natural waist is and this is how much more of the bodice we have uh, and i also noticed that it was a little bit big at the bust so I'm gonna um, tweak that a little bit. It's just like a little tweak. I feel like if I didn't do it, it would be okay-ish, but I really want it to like fit really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and tweak this bodice and then uh, do another try on and then attach it to the skirt, hopefully. So I marked everything with pins while I was trying it on. And before I actually stitch everything together, I actually have to transfer those markings onto the the bodice so i'm using a heat erasable pen and just marking out where my natural waist is first and then i'm going to add some seam allowance to that i ended up adding 2.5 centimeters instead of just a 1.5 because i was scared it would be too short and then i just generally uh went over where my pins were with the pen and transfer that and hindsight like now that I'm watching it back I think I should have put on the bodice inside out and pinned on the inside and then I could have marked it like I am here but it would have been easier I wouldn't have to transfer the markings and then transfer the markings to the inside where I could actually see them anyway you know ugh, live and learn so it worked out fine but um yeah, it would have just made it a little bit easier for myself. So I then pinned everything back again and um, stitched along those new lines. I then tried it on again and I was happy with the fit. So I cut off all of my excess um, and I debated whether I would be lazy and just place these um, stitched together on top of the pattern, the paper pieces to transfer my new markings 
uh, and my new stitching lines but I decided that I didn't want to do that because it wasn't working out very nicely so I just grabbed my seam ripper took the bodice apart transferred the markings and then um, put the bodice back together hello so um, it's day two of making this mock-up for our party uh, yesterday I finished transferring my markings onto the paper pattern but I haven't actually cut it out yet because I wanted to make sure that I'm um, I want to like to put it all together and because I haven't quite decided if I'm sewing it like how much of the um, how much seam allowance I'm adding I guess from my waistline to where the skirt is going to meet the the bodice I guess I'm not really sure how to explain that better so I'm not really sure where I'm going with that yet and I wanted to like put the whole dress together um, or not the whole dress put the whole lining together including the zipper try it on and once I've done that um, see if there's any fit issues that I want to address at that point if there are then do that uh, and then retransfer those markings onto the pattern page to the pattern pieces uh, and if there aren't any fit issues, then I will go ahead and cut the pattern pieces um, with the new uh, sort of markings, I guess, the alterations that I made, and then um, go ahead and cut out my wool layer and make the kind of actual dress and attach it to the lining, um, remove the zipper, you know, reattach the zipper to the other dress, that whole shebang. The cool thing about it being kind of mirrored is that I only had to unpick like one side um, to transfer my markings. I was like, no, I have to unpick the whole thing and sew it again. But then it was just like three seams, so it wasn't that bad. Um, so yeah, I've got it all ready. I think it's gonna look really nicely like this. Um, I'm really happy with how it's looking right now, uh, but obviously it's not finished. So when it's actually put together it'll look different. My idea is to try to get as much of this done as possible today. Like I wanted to, if I could finish this dress today, that would be ideal. The sheets that I used for the lining had this trim, um, like a border at the top with this nice cotton trim. And I thought it'd be really cool to add this trim on the li in the lining, like on the inside, at the bottom of the dress just add this trim to it just as a little nod to my grandmother um so yeah i tried to start unpicking this yesterday but the actual like this is a hundred percent cotton and it's very old um and it did start to rip the fabric so i need to decide if i want to sorry i need to decide if i want to um kind of sacrifice this portion to um, make it easier for me to just rip it out of here or if I really want to like painstakingly remove every stitch. Spoiler alert, I went the easy route because it turned out I didn't have enough space for all of that so I still had to fold it down. Anyway, I'll talk about that later. Here I am adding the or joining the bodice to the skirt matching all of those nice seams and everything and um, so I'm just going to put the dress together really quickly and, or like the lining together with the zipper like I mentioned before and try that on one last time before I move on to the um, fashion fabric. And for my invisible zipper I actually saw this trick on TikTok where, um, sorry I'm just pressing that seam before I move on to the zipper. I basically saw this trick on TikTok where you press the zipper so that it, the teeth are not as close to the tape and then you pin that down to your fabric and obviously using a zipper foot you stitch that together and it's like the best result for a zipper uh, for invisible zippers I've ever had and I never thought I would say this but you should try that TikTok hack. Okay. This looks really good. It fits really nicely. Obviously it needs boning. Um, but yeah, it feels like fitted enough where everything is where it's supposed to go. 
but not so tight that I'm uncomfortable or can't move. So I think this is perfect, exactly what I need it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my pattern pieces um, from the paper and then start cutting out the wool and um, taking apart the zipper and all that stuff and putting together this dress. And I think then once this is all finished, I can actually get started with my proper dress, the final. So I feel like this is a really good, um, I'm glad I spent the time getting this to fit right because I feel like it looks really, really beautiful. For my fashion fabric, I'm using this wool, I think it's a blend, but I'm not sure because I did get this, I thrifted this. Uh, it had some moth holes and some like damage, which um, leads me to believe that it has a high percentage of raw, like actual wool. Uh, it doesn't, there's no moths in my house, don't worry, this is very old. Um, and I think it was from like an old haberdashery that closed uh, and they were like selling all of their like that stock so anyway yeah wool uh, basically now we're just gonna repeat all of the same steps that we did for the lining but in the outer fabric um, yeah that's it pretty much. Uh, I still have quite a bit of this left, so I might have to make like a matching jacket or um, something like that to go with this and make it a little outfit. Another thing that's going to be different for this instead of the lining is that we need to do boning. So I had this little square left of fabric for from the lining, so I cut some uh, strips on the bias and I am not making continuous bias because it doesn't there's no point I just need like a few for boning channels but I like to cut it on the bias just because I think uh, it like moves better it's easier to stitch to curved seams so yeah I'm just making sure that the line these are all like nice and straight and then I'm gonna um, measure them against the seams that I have so that I know that I have enough I don't have to cut any more and um, yeah press those you know you know how to make bias and then stitch them together I'll show you how I did that so for the actual sewing what I'm doing is I'm attaching each side of the bias to one side of the seam allowance which was pressed open so what happens is I kind of like just stitch it so that there's no stitching visible on the outside of the garment and I go over on both sides and um, make sure that it's like really nicely secured there's no like raw seams or anything and then once I've done that I just give it a little stitch at the bottom so that the channel is closed and I do this in the seam allowance so it won't be visible on the outside and that way when I actually add my boning it won't fall through to the other side. For boning today I'm using these zip ties uh, for a few reasons. One of them is that I had them already so it was good use of materials uh, and yeah just uh, didn't want to go out and purchase other things and yeah just, just was easier. So what I'm doing here is I'm I stick it in like I cut it to the size I heat bind it so that it's not pointy uh, and then I actually pin with like not quite 1.5 centimeters uh, away from the seam allowance from the like raw edge but just like a little bit less than that um, so that when I actually stitch this together I can um, push the boning or like the zip tie inside the channel so that I can actually stitch everything together without having to stitch over the boning, if that makes sense. And then I just go through and give that like a really quick stitch. I'm use actually using like a gathering stitch here just to make it really, really super quick. Um, I just want to like loosely secure the zip ties in place at this point. Then I used this little off cut that I had and I stitched um, a tube out of it to form some straps for later. And I eventually got it turned, but it was, <laughs> it took a while, it was very annoying. And I pressed this so it looked really nice and flat and finished. 
and it turns out that it was exactly the right amount to make two straps so I did not measure this it was a very lucky break for me uh, and I stitched it to the um, bodice so to the outer like fashion fabric of the bodice uh, again really loosely just to secure it in place for now I also went ahead and attached the skirt to the bodice added the zipper and um, now I'm just going to stitch the actual lining to the dress to then finally do some finishes hopefully soon I ended up just ripping the trim from the from its place um, because I realized that it was quite big like quite a wide trim I measured out my seam allowance and I pressed that up so that it would be out of the way and then to actually stitch the trim to the to the lining what I did was I folded down the raw edge on itself um, and uh, pinned that in place just like you see here and then I just stitched it down by machine and then I went ahead and did some under stitching on the top um, seam where the bodice or the lining and the dress join after giving that a really good press, I also folded down the edges of the lining where uh, along the zipper and um, I folded that down really neatly and pinned that and I finished that by hand. And I also did that for the slit or the opening in the slit. I checked what Gertie wanted us to do in the book um, and then I ended up just uh, folding it down and uh, attaching it by hand. The hem of the dress was also done by hand in pretty much the same way as I just mentioned. Okay, hello. It's time to start our uh, final version of this dress. This is the fabric that I want to use or that I'm using for this dress, for the final version of this dress. It's this really beautiful brocade with, um, it has like a beige kind of base with these beautiful like flowers i'm not sure if they're roses or peonies or something i'm not really a floral expert but it has this beautiful like metallic gold around the flowers and it's just got a little like sheen to it uh, and then the wrong side of this is looks like this which is still quite pretty but Obviously, we're going with this beautiful. This is actually 140, around 140 centimeters wide, like probably for 142 or something like that, which is good. So that means that I have quite a lot of fabric to work with. I believe it's polyester. We also need some lining. I'm using this. This is the Minerva Core Range Super, no, anti static Super Soft Lining. Um, I went with this color. I don't know off by heart what number because the colors for this lining are like numbers because there's so many. I will leave it linked below if you want to have a look. I really like this lining. Um, it is very, very soft. It's not as slippery as normal linings. It is polyester, but it's not that slippery and it is anti-static. Like I really do really like this one and it's very wide. It's um, 160. So I have this much, which is enough. I think I'm only going to line the bodice anyway. So I have enough for the bodice. It matches, I think, the roses really nicely. So I think that will be fun. And then I also got this really pretty trim that has um, sequins on it. And that's going to be for the straps. I haven't decided if I'm going to do just this trim for straps because obviously there's going to be boning in the bodice i don't need the straps really for functionality they're more for like visual effect and i think what i'm going to do is actually um go in and add like some beading to the middle uh some pink beads and add a little bit of like embellishment that way and i think that would really bring out the colors of the roses and like bring everything together and i got enough for the straps and also to add um, a little trim around the waist yeah really excited to get through this but i think the actual sewing process is going to be pretty similar so i'm not going to film all that much of the like construction of this because it's pretty much the same the only difference is the shape of the skirt so i had I have all my pieces together now right but i added i found this tr this pink ribbon 
in my stash and I was like oh this is gonna look amazing because it matches perfectly so I added it to the center of the trim that I already had that I bought and then I stitched that uh, for the straps and I also added that to the waist um, I think it looks really really cute and um, I added this by machine because it's pretty much invisible okay hello update the dress is pretty much put together obviously as you can tell I have my three-quarter skirt it looks really good let me show you the swoosh and obviously I added pockets um, I did a brocade for the back and then I did lining here um, I thought it would add less weight and um, also I didn't want to cut into my um, I didn't want to cut into the like length of brocade that I have left because I feel like I could probably make a dress out of that um, and it was literally I only needed it for like half of a pot for like two pockets or like because you always cut, cut four so for one pair and I was like mm, I might as well just do lining um, and because the brocade offcuts that I had left um, I wanted to save for some bias for the hem so I'm gonna hem this with bias tape so yeah I'm really happy with the fit I just put it on I was gonna actually put it on the mannequin but I thought it looked better on me um, the fit is perfect. I love it. I think it looks really pretty. I think the only issue that I have right now is the straps are a little big and in order to fit I have to pull them like really far in which doesn't look good. So I think I'm gonna have to like make them a little bit smaller. So I have to measure how much I need to fold them down basically and uh, stitch them hopefully that won't be like a super noticeable thing but yeah I'm really happy with how it looks I think it looks really beautiful and I'm really glad that I left this um, unstitched on the bottom because um, actually I don't know if I will stitch it because it doesn't feel like it's moving or going anywhere and I am going to now embellish this ribbon like basically I'm going to add beads to the pink ribbon so I think this will just make it easier to uh, not have to go through all of the thicknesses of the fabric and stuff. I dove into the extensive bead stash that I own and I found colors that matched so I have some gold beads, I have some uh, pinks and I kind of played around uh, especially at the back of this first strap with the placement and kind of what I wanted um, like how I wanted this to look like what the pattern was going to be uh, and once I sorted that out I just uh, strung whatever beads I was doing and uh, then couched them so that they would each be individually secured I used a I think this is a number 10 darning needle you can use there are specific beading needles but I find them very very difficult to thread um, so I just prefer using this. I haven't had any problems so far. And I'm using some Guterman uh, Sewell polyester thread in the matching pink to the ribbon. And what else am I doing? Oh, and I'm also using some uh, beeswax to um, wax the thread and that just makes it a lot easier to use. It makes it tangle less and I just find that when you're working with beads and things like this that are already quite fiddly. If your thread is also being fiddly, it just makes it so much harder. So I feel like waxing your thread just makes the processes like this go a lot smoother. Hello, so we're at the stage where we're ready to start the hem or like evening out the hem. I actually, um, so I did the beading along the like kind of pink ribbon section of the trim. I'm really happy that I did that. I think it really adds um, a little bit more texture and more interest to the trim and uh, it's really coming together and like the vision that I had in my mind. My hair looks crazy. Sorry, I'm setting it with, um, I've got my pin curls in so it, it just looks crazy. I'm sorry. And my process for doing this is going to be 
measuring tape and pins. Okay, so I'm going to find the shortest point of the skirt. So the point where it hasn't dropped or it's dropped the least around the circumference. And that's gonna be my kind of baseline. I'm gonna measure that to the floor. And then I'm gonna go around the whole length uh, or the whole like width of the skirt all around and I'm going to mark that same measurement all around the skirt. Then I'm going to um, trim it to that length that I have the pins. And next I'm going to um, pin my bias tape or you know bias binding to the skirt with right sides together. I'm gonna stitch that down by machine and then I'm gonna flip it to the inside. I'm gonna press that all nice and neat and then I'm going to hem it down by hand and that's the skirt finished hopefully. Okay, so that's it. That is the dress, or I guess both dresses. Um, the wearable mock-up came out better than I could have imagined and how well it all came together, how quickly it all came together too. Uh, Cause I think I, I made both dresses um, in four days. So I think that's pretty good as well. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with the dress. It fits really beautifully. I wore it for the party as you saw in this uh, in these last clips I met Patrick Grant he was very friendly and very nice yeah it was such an amazing night it was amazing to hang out with some of my sewing friends some of which I've been you know talking online with for maybe like two three years some of them some of them let a little bit less time but still I also met some new sewing friends which is really exciting um, I got to meet people that I work with who I never get to be in the same room with. Thank you to everyone who came up to say hi. Um, it was really cool to meet you and to, you know, see the faces behind uh, the comments and the... Yeah, it, it, was, it was really cool to get to meet everyone and to just be in that atmosphere, talking, sewing, talking fabrics. I think that's everything for me. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm also on TikTok, I'm really trying that one, but I'm not very good at it, so. And also my Minerva.com profile, which will all be linked below, so you can go and browse at your leisure. And also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It would mean so much to me. I am hopefully gonna have a new video every Wednesday. And don't forget to like this video if you did enjoy it and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about my dress. Were you there? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!